Could you speak to the malleability of people's testimonies? I'm just wondering if you have other examples that you can pull from. I mean, certainly in police investigations, you see this constantly. Uh, cinematically, Rashomon is a pretty good example. But I'd love to to hear you explore that in any way that makes sense. It's, it just seems that memory is less reliable, perhaps, than people would think at first glance. I think both observation and memory. So the impression that we get is that we're good observers. We wouldn't miss something big in front of us, happening right in front of us. And second, our memories are are pretty accurate. And if you learn anything about uh, cognitive psychology at all, it's that both those things are just simply not true. So there's all these studies into what's called inattentional blindness, where you know big things happen right in front of you, and the, the Dan Simon's uh, basketball video for folks that uh, know what I'm talking about is a wonderful example of it. I did a thing called the color changing card trick on YouTube. It's the first quackology video we did actually, where you don't notice all these changes that are happening around you. So the way in which observation actually works is that it's incredibly clever. You know, if you were taking all the information coming at you all of the time, you just need a brain the size of the planet. So your brain focuses on what it thinks is the most important thing. And then if other stuff changes, you don't spot that. So we are very selective observers is the first part. And second, when it comes to memory, it's not like replaying a, a film or a videotape. Instead, you have these kind of fragments and you try and create a narrative around it. And the place I see that most frequently is actually when people describe magic tricks. So you perform a magic trick. They then tell their friends what's happened. It's nothing like the thing they've just seen. And in fact, the problem is their friend says, well, show me. And now you're about to do something which was completely different to the, uh, the description they've just had from their, their other friend. So, yeah, we, we, we create this narrative. Often, if we're being interviewed by somebody, they can suggest details to us. Did some studies on paranormal key bending, where you put a bent key down on the table and the psychic says, look, you can, still, it's, you can see it's still bending. And around about 40% of people say they can see the key still bending. Uh, with the seance work, again, about 40%, 50% of people would go with the suggestions of the medium. Oh, my goodness, the table's levitating now. And they'd come out and swear they saw the table levitate. So our memory is very malleable as we try and remember fragments and create a plausible kind of story. That's how it all works. And of course, what's terrifying is that often within the legal system, that's not realized by juries. And they go, well, it's a very confident witness there. They wouldn't have missed something big in front of them, or they must be remembering what happened. There's no evidence that's the case. Yeah, it's terrifying. It's totally terrifying. It's just, uh, which, you know, thankfully there, there are initiatives, I think it's called the Innocence Project, uh, which is focused on sort of DNA-based exoneration. I'm sure somebody in the uh, responses to this podcast will, will fact check that if, if necessary, but it is, it is both deeply interesting, right? Uh, because of the sort of cognitive reconstruction that can go on and the power of suggestibility to see the fallibility of observation and memory. And it's deeply, deeply troubling also mm. when you think about some of the ramifications. But what's funny about it is we all suffer from this kind of uniqueness bias. We think, oh, it's other people that aren't observant. It's other people that don't remember yeah. stuff. And, and I, I mean, you know, I've done loads of these studies. I still find it hard to get into my head. That would be me thinking the table levitated <laughs> or the key bent. So it, we, we all like to think it's, it's everybody else's problem. It's, it's us as, as much as it's them. We, we're all very, very similar in that regard. <laughs> 